Hello there and welcome to my new video about Raps and Dwarf Fortress. In this one I'm going to build with you, step by step, three different trap designs that you can use to defend your base. There are of course way more methods than just these three, but I chose them for being effective, powerful, and adaptable to your own liking, so there's uh, going to be a bit of a talk also how you can adjust and improve on these according to your own resources. So let's get started, and if you want to see other traps than the ones featured in this video next, just let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. So the first one that I want to build with you is the pitfall trap with a retractable bridge. I chose this design because this is just a iconic one and it can be used in so many different ways. We're going to build a relatively small pitfall here, but technically the method can be used for basically every size of pitfall that you want to use. We're going to make one happen here. I'm going to make the pit just these four grids here wide, so the demonstration won't take ages to be built. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to dig a channel where we want to have the actual pit. The next thing that I'm uh, doing here is I dig out a little bit of a hole here as a maintenance channel. These will be providing access to the dwarfs downstairs if they need to get on outside or if we need to build something extra into the trap. It's always worth having a little bit of a uh, maintenance shaft. So let's turn off our holders so the digging gets done. And this is the first step. I'm going through this here with the channeling job because when you do this like that, you are digging away the first layer and you're leaving a ramp that your dwarfs can crawl back up again. This is pretty useful because this way it's pretty easy to uh, dig the pit. It's much harder to dig the pit when you're already below on the bottom level. So we're going to do this like that. And as we see there, it takes a moment for this to be dug out. And technically, you can make this as wide or whatever you want. It's just important that you do dig the pit before you build the bridge. You will be not able to dig the ground away anymore once the bridge has been built. So let's go and do that another time on the next layer. And if the if the pits go bigger, it might be that your dwarfs are doing silly stuff like they're here, and if that might be the case, you either use your maintenance shaft to give them access to the uh, to the fields they, they didn't work well with, or, well, that's what the maintenance tunnels are good for. Sometimes with larger pits, your dwarfs do work their work orders off quite silly. And you might already notice here that a couple of these slopes just disappeared. That's because when they don't have support from a wall or anything massive anymore, they cannot exist anymore. So we've dug out our pit now like that. We cannot go below because otherwise we would be sitting in our metal bar storage. So next step, we're removing constructed things by and we're, we're scraping away now the last couple of ramps because we don't want our enemies to be able to crawl out of that thing so that's that we have now successfully built a pitfall trap the only thing that we're lacking now is the bridge you select here with this icon a retractable bridge it's important to use a retractable one for a pitfall trap the drawbridges aren't as useful in my humble opinion and then the next thing we require will be a lever to flick. And let's get rid of these stones downstairs here because we need them later. And while the bridge is being built, I'm going to talk a little bit about the pit here. So the pit as it is right now, it's extremely undeadly. It's just two Z levels deep and it has nothing on the ground which makes it extra deadly. An average person would not even suffer too much damage from falling down here. You can increase the damage by adding in spiky things like uh, these here, or also a little bit less uh, a little bit less obvious if you floor the floor with stuff like lead or something equally dense and heavy, the fall damage is increasing as well because when you're falling on to onto something, it it matters how dense and heavy the stuff is. That's weird, I know, but that's Dwarf Fortress. Let's not, let's not doubt it. It works like that. So it's up to you how you make this extra deadly. You can also have 
a pit of water here or magma, whatever. The pitfall itself is just a method of getting the enemy unwillingly a little bit below. Last step, we link the lever now to the bridge. So when that has happened, when we flick the lever, the bridge will go away and the person will fall down below and we're exactly where we want it to. So like I said, the concept as it is right now ain't too deadly because it's just, uh, just a low fall, but the deeper you make the fall and the more ingenuity you put into the whole method, the more deadly it becomes. So let's uh, see. Are they done yet with the linking? So they're taking a moment longer than I thought. But uh, in general, when we uh, when we pull the lever afterwards, it's clear what will happen. The bridge will go away, and the pitfall will be will be open. So there we go. Boom bridge away. It's really important to note though, and that's true for all the bridges, bridges do require a moment to do their thing. You saw here, he, fl uh, he flicked the lever and it takes a while for the bridge to do its thing. So pay attention to when you flick the levers when you want to put up a pitfall. Here for example, it would be really cool to have a really wide pitfall and, a one, and one here. And for example, what you could do would be a pressure plate. You find them in the traps here. And you can do a pressure plate at the end of this thing and link it to the bridges. And this way, the first person to leave the parkour will take away a floor for everybody behind him. So use your own ingenuity to, uh, to get this uh, done. When you're done with everything, the very, very last step is putting up a wall in here. And then the whole system is sealed off and safe to use and nobody will get out there. So if you want to be sure that climbers can't make it out there, you just uh, have to make the thing deep enough or deadly enough or preferably both. So let's get on over to the next concept that I want to introduce to you, the infamous Atom Smasher. So Atom Smasher, what's meant with that? When Dwarf Fortress players refer to the Atom Smasher, they, al or they always mean being crushed below a drawbridge. And this is something that I'm going to build in here into the um, pitfall trap because I personally find that a really, really good um, finishing for the pitfall trap to begin with. So what we require are two drawbridges. So you should pay attention to where the cogwheel's at is the spot where the drawbridge will retract towards to. So that means the cogwheel's here will be where the drawbridge will be sitting at when we close it. So this area here will be occupied by the drawbridge. And as you might or might have not noted, I have made this uh, pit here one tile wider. So here it is only four tiles wide and below down here it's now six tiles wide because I used the, uh, the, the outmost uh, thingies here to fit in the bridge mechanisms. So for the Atom Smasher, we put these on these facing uh, towards each other like that. And now the next thing we require is going to be a lever. Although, well, now we're going to make it like that. So the lever here will be then linked to those bridges once they are done. And we have to pull them up before this thing gets deadly. As it is uh, in, the, in the starting situation, it ain't deadly at all. But uh, we we have to wait until until these are built. Can't take that much longer. My dwarfs aren't the fastest today. And let's link that thing to the bridges. Obviously, they lack some experience with bridge uh, building. So we can link both bridges to the same lever. And once these are connected, one flick of that lever will make it happen that the bridges um, are retracted. And then the thing is quite simple. When you trap something down there, well, let's see. Have to wait until these things are, are done. So once these bridges are retracted, everything between here and there is in a very, very deadly situation. Just waiting for them to connect that. There we go. There now, 
and now a flick of the lever and now we see this thing is armed like i said this is now the absolute deadly zone and when we flick that lever one more time the bridges will go down and smash so everything between here and there which isn't the titan the dragon or anything comparably huge will be destroyed you can also use this as a method to get rid of waste or anything like that because every item that is uh, that is in your way when it's below the bridge when the bridge goes down it ain't below the bridge anymore when the bridge goes up again. This is a really, really powerful method, and you can use, of course, the Atom Smasher in many, many other ways. It doesn't have to be connected to a pitfall trap. I just found that a pretty fun way to do things. It can have all manner of different mechanics. It's just important that you lock in the enemy in between somehow, and they, the bridges must be retracted like that to be deadly. When you're standing on top of them and you activate them, you're getting flung through the air. Also very fun and very deadly. But that's that. So let's get on up to number three. The last trap that I'm going to introduce in this one is going to be a drowning chamber. So I've prepared this already in the, in the construction. I'm going to go over it step by step with you so you understand how it works. So the idea here is that our enemy is forced to go down this way. And once they are inside that chamber, you're flicking a lever or you're putting a... a uh, pressure plate down here so the enemy locks in locks themselves in like that however you want to put it you need th you need at least two exits here we have three so we link one lever to these two exits so this lever will control the entry and the way deeper into the fortress this will be eventually the way how the enemy could get into the fortress where they have to say hi to our armed people here so that's that so this lever will seal off the further way and this other lever here is linked to that bridge this bridge here is not really going to be opened at any point because this here is basically where i'm going to dispose of all the water that i don't want to have because the thing here is the water that you put into a drowning chamber well it ha you have to get rid of it at, at some point again as well because the water is not going to go away so this is the drowning chamber as it is entry and further way through the fortress so let's uh, help you out with how the water gets in there so let's go back upstairs what i did there is i went from my source of water which is here that uh, floodgate so i dug a tunnel from that floodgate that leads from here all the way to there and here i punched a hole in the ground i didn't do anything else than that and that hole is leading into that chamber so the idea here is let's have it all let's see once it's all linked up this here is going to be locked in the initial setup because this is going to be the bridge that we're going to use after the trap has been sprung and we want to get rid of the water. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm using bridges instead of doors, bridges are indestructible when they're raised. Doors are not. So, whoopsie, wrong button. Let's send one brave squad of dwarves in there and I want to show you how the trap works in action. So these guys go in there, we pull the lever, and boom, they are now trapped in there. No way out. They can't destroy the bridges, they can't destroy the walls. There's nothing they can do. Poor suckers. And then we're going to pull the lever for the inner floodgate, and then, well, it's just taking a bit of time, but uh, they're, they're going to get killed by that eventually. So this trap is, of course, you can do this trap with uh, different variations simply by adding magma instead of water and that's pretty brutal if you use magma the downside of that one when you're using water is quite obviously not everybody is uh is killable by water water is not something that uh that everybody's susceptible to but at the end of the day well it does the trick you know and this system here well, the trickiest part is, again, to lock in as many enemies as possible. So my personal tip would be to make the drowning chamber as large as you want it to, 
or preferably pretty large, to trap in as many enemies as possible, and provide enough water for the room, because if you don't provide enough water, the water will ultimately just dissipate and evaporate. It's depending on how hot the, en the environment is, but uh, as a rule of thumb, just bring more water than uh, than, act than necessary here. As you see, I, I, I made that room smaller, because when I made the room larger, it didn't work out as intended. And uh, drowning chambers are pretty fun. It's just, the uh, I think the, the, the most difficult part about them is to get them to get the enemy locked inside there so for that method pressure plates work quite nicely or a good finger on the levers i personally would say long hallways like uh like the one that i showed you in the beginning also work quite decently where you can just uh, lure in a large portion of the enemy i think you get the idea so that's been my first three traps that i wanted to introduce to you and while these poor suckers are drowning, I want to say thanks so much for watching. So we're going to go for further experiments in future videos. Like I said, drop me a comment down below if you want to see different and other videos like these. What traps you want to see, I'd be really, really down to hear from you. Leave a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I do daily content like this, and I'd be really, really delighted to have you folks as well. So, have a wonderful day, check out the playlist link in the description box leading to various other Dwarf Fortress tutorials of mine if you still want to get more, and have a wonderful day, and see you soon. Bye-bye.